as um, people are leading up to their passing, what you actually find is they will start astral traveling more. Uh, people will start remembering their dreams more. They start to connect with their own spirit guides. And their spirit guides are there really as people who are guiding them through life. We've all got them. And we've all got a master guide who we chose before we came to the earth plane. And what the process is, is as they're leading up, they're getting more connected. They're, they're starting to realize, wow, something's going on. They may not consciously aware of this. And so in their subconscious, they know, which is why a lot of people write letters. Um, they build bridges. They say what they need to say. They say, I'm sorry, and everything else. And you do find that as the closer the time comes, maybe three days before, you start really going, wow, what's that? And then two days before, it becomes more intense. And then literally the 24 hours, you start seeing sparkles and flashes, and you actually see um, spirit coming to collect you. And it's recorded that people go, my mum was talking about someone that we couldn't see. And the reason is, is because it's spirit coming to collect them. So there's a lot of process. They're being prepared all along. No matter who you are, whether it's a sudden suicide, a sudden death, um, someone who had a long drawn out illness, we're all prepared. So looking at the other side where you actually have spirits who are ready to receive those people over from the earth plane. Um, the spirits actually do go through a preparation. Uh, they work out who's going to receive them. It's always the soul family, the, the elders, um, the spirit guides, you know, the master guides, and these people are there. Sometimes when it's a sudden passing, it's like, oh my God, quick, whoop, rush. Um, but, and I mean that in the sense of a suicide. But when it's some, sometimes if it's a sudden passing through a car accident, it's often predestined that it's going to happen. So they have a lot more time to prepare. And it's really just making sure that everything is there. They have their life plan, their contract. They have um, the healing room available. They're ready to give as much energy. And it's all about just making sure that they are loved as soon as they cross over. And that is the purpose. That's what happens with the um, spirits and how they prepare. They're just making sure that they're actually welcomed. Before they actually uh, come over, the spirits and the spirit guides do go through some form of, um, if you want to call it training, we'll call it training. Um, they go through some form of, uh, you know, understanding that, hey, they've had these issues. This is what we need to look at. This is what they need to go through. This is the life contract that they have done. This is what they planned. This is what they didn't achieve. So there's some acknowledgement there, but a lot of it is just really just embracing them with love. And it's the elder and the master guide job to really take them through that so they've they've kind of understood it they know they don't need the training but the general guides will need that training and the soul family will need that kind of understanding look this is what they're going to be needing we have many exit points and let's say for instance we have three exit points in our life one two and three we have the ability to change those exit points um, and what I mean by that is by being able to connect with our spirit guides and the spirit guides will be able to say you know, we have to learn this, this is something else we've got to learn, this is something you need to learn. And by understanding what your life plan is, you can choose your exit point. And I think the easiest way of someone understanding this is we astral travel, we connect with our guides through our sleep. And we can say, you know what, I'm not happy with this situation. Our soul understands it, so we connect on a soul level. And so our soul says, I'm not kind of happy with that. So actually, I kind of need to stay a little bit longer. But I'm going to learn through that possible exit point, say an accident. And so therefore, they learn a lesson. And then they can learn another lesson. And then it's like, OK, no, I think now I'm ready to go. But then there's some times where, look, if you're meant to go, you're meant to go. And if you've, if you've been saved from one passing, then there will be another passing very quickly. Or, you know, because if they're meant to go at that point, then they will go. No matter whether the doctor saves them or not, there will be a short space of time before someone else goes. And I'm just gonna use a reading that I've done to kind of help people understand that is because I gave a reading to a lady, her son passed, um, he should have passed, I don't know, six months before from um, a motorcycle accident. He was six minutes away from death and the doctors brought him back. Then six months later, it was a simple accident in a large van, 
knocked his head. He would have survived, but it was his time to go. And that injury was just a knock on the head, and he had a brain aneurysm, and off he went. So it was his exit point. It should have happened. Um, and that was, his, that was his way. Normally, when we are choosing our exit points, we've had that discussion with our guides in our dreams, in our astral travel, in our subconsciousness, in our soul. And so our spirit guides know that it's going to happen at this point. It, it's not a case of, oh, maybe I might go here. Hmm. It's not that. You've made a decision. And it's like, okay, now I'm going to go. And they've prepared you for that. So it's not kind of like one of those quick, <laughs> let's rush. Um, it's actually pre-planned and predestined. And they've got time to prepare you as well. It's quite interesting how everybody expects, you know, certain people to be there on the other side to say, hey, it's okay, come on, we love you. Um, but it doesn't always happen. And the reason is, is because people reincarnate. And so if they've reincarnated, they can't be there to greet you because they're actually on the earth plane. And so I've never had it where a spirit has come through. Hey, I'm really disappointed that my dad wasn't there. Um, I've never had that. Um, but I'm sure there's times where people have gone, oh, I was expecting that person. But the more they, when they cross over, they go, ah, oh, that's the reason why he's not here because he's actually back in the earth plane. So yeah, I mean, there are times that, you know, the person who you're expecting isn't going to be there. Those people who've committed suicide, um, the process can be different and it depends upon the suicide. If the suicide has been a murder-suicide situation, then yes, the process is different because they have taken somebody else's life and therefore they have to go in a different direction, they have to experience different things and they go on a different healing journey. But suicides Generally, most of them tend to go through exactly the same process that you and I would go through, um, going into the white light, moving on, doing their healing. Um, so there's nothing different. It just depends on the circumstance. And like I said, if it was a murder-suicide, then yes, there would be something different. But generally, no, suicides are treated exactly the same. Impulse suicides are a little bit of a surprise to spirit. And the reason is, is because, again, as I talk about the exit points, someone can take free will and say, you know what, actually, I know what my life contract is, but hey, I'm checking out. And it can be a surprise. It can be an absolute shock to spirit. It's like, whoa, we wasn't expecting that. Because don't forget, we're human beings. We're living, you know, we're living this human life. We're just spiritual beings living a human existence. And so it could be just something that goes, I'm really not happy with this, bang. And it's happened. Most suicides have been predestined but there's a handful that are you know that are absolute shock and it's like whoa and and spirit just go okay all hands on deck off we go and that's that's the reason why so if we plan our passing uh, just like we plan our life why do we choose murders abuse certain situations suffering why don't we just go to sleep and that's it we go and it's mainly because of a lesson that we have to learn it's mainly because of circumstances in our past life that we have to heal. Um, situations that have to help our loved ones. I can give you an instance. It's like, why would my friend um, choose to suffer from cancer? Well, it was a massive lesson in her healing um, or her transition for everyone around her. Um, down to her daughters, her husband, her ex-husband, myself as well. There was a lot of learning. It was about, hey, looking at death, looking at the relationship, really analyzing, really actually growing. And for me, it was a massive lesson to understand that I couldn't heal everybody, even though I was giving her healing. And then it was a transition that I had to take her from one side to the other. And so why do we choose that? And it's all because of a process. It's a lesson that we have to learn. It's, it could be past life karma that we need to balance. So there's no, it depends upon the individual circumstance, but normally there's a lesson in it. So once we're met by our spirit guide, what we actually do is we go into kind of this waiting room, which is what I call in the book, the waiting room. And at that point, the spirit guides will bring us back to the earth plane so we can actually see how our loved ones are reacting, how they're grieving, what people really think about us, you know, and that's kind of a bit of an eye-opener. Um, 
And it's all about stripping away the ego. It's all getting rid of the layers of the ego. And so therefore, we, we go back to the earth plane, we drop the signs, the big signs when we have just passed. And then we come back and then we get initiated. It's like you then meet an elder. You then look at your life contract and the life contract, things you did do, things you didn't do. And then you move on and you go into the review and you look at your life. You look at the pain that you cause people, the suffering, the happiness as well. So you look at these things that really had an impact in many people's lives. And then you progress. You progress into different healing. So you're actually able to heal and help um, get rid of the suffering and the pain. And it's all actually about stripping away the ego and getting rid of, of the earthly attachments to obviously this world and once you do that then you're a complete pure soul you're surrendering into the afterlife the white light that we actually all go through um, is symbolic it, it does actually help get rid of the pain the suffering um, any issues that may have been within us um, it doesn't get rid of it all because there are certain things that we need to hold on to or we need to um, move on through in the afterlife but the white light really is just a helpful way of shedding and healing to prepare you into the afterlife.